Good morning. Welcome to Up With Creme. We are getting right to breaking news. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Now this morning, we're actually tracking two shootings that happened overnight. An investigation is underway after a man was shot by law enforcement in Liberty Lake. We'll have more on this story in just a few minutes. Also this morning, Spokane police are investigating a shooting in downtown Spokane. This one happened on the south side of the Maple Street Bridge. Police say they are treating this as a homicide investigation. So this morning, Krim 2's Malia Kamal is live near the Maple Street Bridge. Malia, what information do you have for us? Good morning, Channing and Tim. Now, right behind me is the Maple Street Bridge, and the scene might look calm right now, but just a couple hours ago, police were camped out here investigating a suspicious death. Last night, Spokane Police Department found a person shot to death on the south side of the bridge. The 911 call came in around 9.45 p.m. Police are still searching for any suspects involved. SPD brought in canine units, but no leads turned up. Major crime detectives were on the scene last night, and SPD are treating this as a homicide investigation. In Spokane, Malia Kamal, Prem 2 News. So also overnight, a man was shot by law enforcement after a standoff in Liberty Lake. Around 10 p.m., the Liberty Lake Police Department was called to a domestic violence call on the 900 block of North Malvern Street. The woman on the phone said that an ex-boyfriend showed up to her house and announced and then forced his way into her home. Shortly after police arrived, they heard a gunshot from inside. The Spokane County Sheriff's SWAT team was then called to the house. So that's when a woman ran out of the home, but her son was still inside. A few minutes later, the man left the house and was shot by law enforcement. The suspect was treated and taken to the hospital. He is currently in serious condition. Now this morning, Spokane's investigative regional response team is investigating the shooting. Of course, we'll keep you updated with the very latest information here on Up With Crim, as well as our website, crim.com. Meanwhile, Spokane police spent several hours in a standoff situation in Otis Orchards yesterday evening. Police are not saying much about who they were looking for, just that the suspect was wanted for a violent crime in Spokane. Members of SPD's SWAT team, Spokane County Sheriff's deputies and U.S. Marshals spent several hours on that property on North Ashton Road, but in the end did not actually find the suspect. All right, just after six o'clock, let's take a look at the forecast with meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Thomas, what does the rest of the week have in store for us on this Tuesday? Yeah, a little bit cooler overall, Chania. Hopefully it's not too much of a shock to the system now that you're back here in the north. But uh, I'll tell you what, this morning, not bad at all. 40 degrees at six o'clock in the morning. We absolutely take that any March morning, any given year. The unfortunate part is that it's not going to get very much warmer than that for the rest of the day, but a cold air is filtering into the area as of right now. Backdoor cold front moving in from the north and east. It's about halfway through the inland northwest. In fact, you could probably see where it hasn't cleared the area, and that's where the precipitation is falling over southeastern Washington. This is mainly very light rain, and even though you see some white, which would indicate snow, we have not seen any snow accumulations, so the other situation that could be happening is that the snow is falling, but it's not sticking to anything really because it was in the 50s yesterday. So the ground temperature is probably a bit too warm for any snow accumulations, even if that snow may be falling. Otherwise, just cloudy or mostly cloudy conditions for the rest of the inland northwest showers down in the Palouse and in southeastern Washington, as you just saw. But there are winter weather advisories for the Lookout Pass area, the mountains of North Idaho until 9 a.m. this morning. But we are tracking some snow showers today and certainly some colder temperatures especially in the mornings to come. We'll show you how cold those mornings will be before our temperatures recover back into the 50s by the weekend. Well, heads up, drivers to westbound lanes over Snoqualmie Pass near the summit are closed this morning. Now, crews are repairing a hole in the bridge deck. Officials will reassess later in the day and then give a time as to when it will reopen. It's time now for your morning rush. More news in less time. Heads up anglers, more white sturgeon will be in the Snake River soon. Biologists say Idaho Fish and Game partnered with Idaho Power Company to grow white sturgeon in the Niagara Springs hatchery. These sturgeon are actually being prepped for release in the next few weeks. Anglers will then be able to catch them using the catch and release techniques. 
Our freeways could become cleaner soon. The Idaho Transportation Department will use a new machine to pick up trash along I-90 between Washington and Coeur d'Alene. They will still rely on volunteers through the Adopt a Highway program. However, the machine will then help speed up the collection process. A group of Amazon workers declared itself a union, skipping the vote normally needed to form one. Amazon Workers United is made up of Amazon Fresh employees. Their members are demanding better working conditions. Now, the Seattle Times reporting that the group accused Amazon of retaliation for closing several bookstores nationwide. Amazon says there's no truth to that, and it does not recognize the union at Amazon Fresh. Two concerts are coming to Spokane. Get ready, ZZ Top, the legendary rock and roll band, will play at the First Interstate Center for the Arts on June 9th. You can get tickets starting this Friday on Tickets West. Also coming to Spokane this summer, indie music artist Phoebe Bridgers. She'll be playing at the Pavilion on August 18th. Tickets go on sale this Friday as well. And that's a look at your morning rush. While gas prices are continuing to rise amid inflation and the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine, according to AAA, the average price for gas in Spokane is $4.05 a gallon. In Coeur d'Alene, it's closer to $3.85 a gallon. Now, some people actually say they're changing their driving habits in response to the price increase. It's affected me a little bit um, with regard to, to travel and things like that. But, you know, I mean, everything's going up. Prices are going up with everything. So it's kind of like just following suit. But, you know, we do try to drive a little less, I guess, and, and carpool as much as we can to because of the price. Now, if gas prices continue to rise in Idaho, it could hit a new record. The current record high for regular gas in the gym state is $4.07. Now, gas prices are spiking all over the country, and experts say that they're not coming down anytime soon. So this morning, our Verify team is looking into whether or not this is the biggest price increase in the last 20 years. It's all anyone can talk about, how high the price of gas is. Everywhere you look, prices are jumping. The past week, the average price for a gallon of gas rose 46 and a half cents, and it's got people wondering. Is this the biggest one week spike we've seen for a gallon of gas in the last 20 years? Let's verify. Our sources, Tiffany Wright with AAA, Gas Buddy, and the U.S. Energy Information Administration. Here's what we found. According to Gas Buddy, between the week of February 28th to March 7th, the national average price of gas jumped 46 and a half cents per gallon averaging $4 and 6 cents a gallon. I mean, I haven't seen jumps like that, you know, uh, since I've been at AAA and I've been at AAA now for seven years. Our Verify team sifted through data from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, tracking week to week gas price swings for the last 22 years. And even in 2008, when the price for a gallon of gas hit the all time high of $4 and 16 cents the week of July 7th, the path to get there wasn't as dramatic as it is now. And according to AAA spokesperson Tiffany Wright, the swings we're seeing now are likely going to stay for a while. It's changing, it's changing really fast. So, you know, what you see at the pump tonight could look very different uh, than what you see when you wake up in the morning uh, because we're seeing really big spikes and they're all over the place. So we can verify, yes, the past week to week spike in U.S. price for a gallon of gas is the biggest one week spike we've seen in 20 years. Help us, I ask you. Next could be here. I ask you, Governor. Ukraine's president says he plans to stay in Kyiv as long as necessary as the war in Ukraine nears the two week mark. And here's the one thing you need to know about today's weather. The colder weather is on the way. So even though it is mild out there this morning, the Arctic air mass will be pushing into the inland northwest shortly. Time for your wake up call on this Tuesday morning. Today is International Women's Day and we want to know who is a woman that's influenced you or impacted your life. Use the hashtag up with Krim on social media to shout out some of the women making a difference in your world or text them to us at 509-448-2000. We already have a lot of people yeah, shouting out their moms, their Linda great Callahan. aunt, grandmother. I love this. Keep them coming, everybody. Yeah. I love this positivity on shout a Tuesday. Shout out to all the girl bosses too. Yes, I love a girl boss because who run the world? 
Beyonce said girls. That's so right. It's girls. All right. <laughs> Here's a live look outside. We say good morning to you inland northwest. Happy Tuesday. Choose to make it a great day. Even if that means an extra cup of coffee, treat yourself and be nice to everyone on your way to work today and at work. Let us know where you're watching from this morning.